bold ones. E.G. Marshall, John Saxon, David Hartman, doctors expanding the horizons of the new medicine. Earl Ives, Joseph Campanella, James Parentino, lawyers defending justice in the nation's courtrooms. Leslie Nielsen, Harry Rhodes, public servants enforcing the laws of a challenging society. The bold ones. How much more of it can he take? Not much, huh? I can't get over it. I mean, here I am, taught to respect human life. I sit around praying for someone to die. See, he can give my father a kidney, and he can live. See, you haven't had any lunch, why don't you? Imagine that, doctor. I'm praying for a human being to die. I think I know you better than that, Steve. So it is whatever God you're praying to. I swear. Doctor 359. Dave. Dr. I'm sorry, Doctor, nine. but we have no additional funds for whatever it is you think you need the money for. Well, that's very funny, but this morning I'd settle for one small, live, well-organized kidney. Marco. How soon do you need it? Soon, soon, Dave. Maintenance dialysis won't support him much longer. And here I am, still a five iron away. I've got to get on and down in two. I'm right on the glide path. It's a so small grade, except I'm one thing. I got a 707 set right on my tail. Gentlemen, right 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 good right afternoon. Right Hello, Dr. Hunter. Hi, Dr. Hello, Dr. Hello, doctor. I think we might as well get started, everybody here. Except for the last of the angry old men. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can go ahead without Dr. Gold. Gentlemen, this is a left ventricular bypass pump. Okay. Get up, put your shirt on. Oh, boy. Well, uh, am I going to uh, live, Doc? Tell me, you still working Manny's delicatessen? Oh, yeah, uh, about eight months now. I must have washed about a million dishes. Yeah, you must have eaten about a million chopped liver sandwiches, too, and all that cream cheese. I bet you eat about a vat of cream cheese every day, well, right? It's, it's part of the job, Doc. I mean, you know, Manny, he, he don't pay me too much, and he lets me eat a Borelli, you are a tub of lard. You are the fattest Italian I've ever seen in my life, right? Doc, so help me, I'm gonna go on a... You're gonna, I'm gonna die, go Pirelli. You're gonna die. You keep eating like that, you're gonna die before you can pay me my bill. And speaking of my bill... Come in, come in. Come in, come in. Dr. Gold, you were due at the Institute. Dorothy, I want you to call Manny at Manny's Delicatessen and tell him not to feed Borelli anymore. Otherwise, I'll have to make him an accessory after the fact. Here. What, what, what? Come on, come on, come on. What are you waiting around for? I came in, Doctor, to remind you that you were due at the Institute 15 minutes ago. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> The oxygenated blood then flowed normally from the patient's lungs into his left atrium. From there, 80% of it was drawn by suction into the pump's chamber, held there for a moment by a one-way valve, and then ejected by the pressure of the pump's diaphragm into the aorta. Now, the rest of it took nature's course. It passed through the newly implanted artificial mitral valve into the left ventricle, which continued to beat, and out then into the aorta. Excuse me. Excuse me, doctor. Excuse me, doctors. 
Sorry, Dr. Gold, I'll wait. I was sorry I'm late, fellas, but I had something important to do. <laughs> New Medicine, which bears his name, Dr. Craig has gathered some of the top physicians and scientists in the United States, along with visiting specialists from around the world. Working alone and in teams, they are quietly paving the way for breakthroughs so dramatic and exciting as to boggle the mind. And because of them and others like them, tomorrow promises to be better for all of us. This is Bill Welsh. Very good, Bill. Very good indeed. Some coffee? Yes, thanks. No complaints, doctor? I don't photograph very well for my right side. <laughs> when are you going to release it? Well, we'll put it on the national news at 7 tomorrow night. Our affiliates can spot it on their local newscasts uh, later in the evening. Good. Dr. Craig. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Nancy? You asked me to call you when Dr. Gold arrived. Is he in my office now? I'm afraid that's an understatement, doctor. He's taken over. I don't care what he said. He gives you nutty advice like that, he'll probably flunk out anyway. What? What? Oh, yeah? Well, listen. I'll be with you in a minute, fellas. Look, I don't want any more static. I want you to take those pills away, it says on the bottle. You understand me? And then you call me at the first of the week, right? Right. Oh, boy. Call you for three phone calls. You chewing out your patients again? I, I tell her to take some pills. She tells me she's got a nephew in medical school says she doesn't have to. So now I suppose you're going to chew me out, huh? Three lectures this week and one demonstration. You were late for two and missed one altogether. I had things to do. Important things? Look, you know, I didn't mean anything personal. What did I miss? Nothing. In any event, you've got to do better than this. I'll try. Don't try, Ben. Do. It's important. Well, I think it's more important that I spend the time with my patients. Every minute I'm here means that much time away from them. Most of my people are pretty poor, Dave. They get the short end of the stick everywhere else. I figure I got to give them the best I got. Including your knowledge of new developments, new techniques? Yo, come on, don't give me that. I keep up. I got one of those cockamamie new tape gizmos in my car so I can keep up in wide track stereo. If you can't attend classes, why did you enroll in the first place? You know why, Dave, as well as I do. Because if you don't want to be called a lousy GP anymore, if you want the fancy, shiny new title, quote, specialist in family medicine, unquote, why then you have to have 300 hours of, quote, accredited postgraduate study, unquote. But uh, you're not impressed with a specialist. You bet your sweet life I'm not, partner. Then why do you want it? Need it, doctor, need it. It's tough enough for a GP to get his patients admitted to a hospital the way it is. If I can pick up the specialty, the status symbol, well, it'll get easier. If I can't, the way things are going, I don't have a prayer. You can't have it both ways, Ben. If you intend to get the rating, you've got to attend classes regularly, either here or somewhere else. Hold all calls, Nancy. It's Dr. Lewis calling from Chicago. All right, I'll take it. This may take a little while, but stick around. I'd like to thresh this out once and for all. Hello. Oh, yes, I'll hold. Hey, maybe I can keep Dr. Gold occupied while you're on the phone. Good idea. Hello, Roy. How are you? Listen, I read Dr. Tesla's paper. Yes, it created quite a stir. I'd like to bring him out here to the Institute. This is one of our intensive care units. For every four beds, we have three nurses and the patients are constantly monitored and observed on closed-circuit television. Hi, Mary. How are you, Doctor? Good. Good.
I'll bite. What is it? An analgesic demand unit. Is that so? It dispenses medication. In this case, Meperidin. He had chest surgery yesterday. You mean you let him take as much as he wants? As much as he needs, which he knows better than anyone else. Uh, it's an experiment, but it seems to be working. Patient, heal thyself. Huh. I know. Looks like it belongs in a brokerage house. You call that in medicine. Plug in the patient, push a button, and poof, instant diagnosis. This equipment monitors the patient's condition during surgery. Eight-channel EEG recorder, blood gas monitor, acid-base balance of the blood. Fast, efficient, accurate, saves time, money. And lives? And lives. This can make the difference. And when the computers take over the world, Doctor, what happens to you? I do what you're doing. I go back to school. You're doing what? I'm growing my own arteries. You see, I've got one of these things in me right here, like this. And my tissues grow into the tube. Tissue dye? Well, yeah. So later, when they take this out, well, they'll have room to replace... Or bypass. Well, yeah, whatever. The arteries that are clogged up in my leg. Using his own tissue eliminates rejection. We hope. Dr. Gold, telephone. Dr. Benjamin Gold. It's probably Dave. I guess he's ready to tangle again. Excuse me. This is Dr. Gold. Mr. Rodriguez, doctor. Frank Rodriguez. Well, what happened? Automobile accident. They're taking him to Craig now. You'll have to wait outside, as soon as we know something. OK, get his head now. Easy. You know what the problem is, Pete? Head injury. Blood pressure? Very faint, about 80. All right, you go find a place to sit down. Say, buddy, you can't okay, go in here. Okay, kid, I'm a doctor, just like you. I'm his doctor. How's he doing? Answer me! We've got a faint pulse, but no spontaneous respiration. And he's unresponsive. Do a tracheotomy. Doctor, he's gone. Give me a trach, kid. Doctor, I Come on, can't come on, come on, give me a trach, hey, kid. Give me a problem? Yeah. Auto accident. He's not ventilating. Okay, we do a trach. Yes, doctor. Thyroidectomy. About five years ago, it was a rough one. He's had trouble breathing ever since. Not a bad job. I've seen work. Oh, thank you. I didn't catch your name. Stewart. Ted Stewart. Oh, sure. Dave Craig's other boy, I wonder. Huh? Pretty good job, anyway. Let's just hope we caught him in time. Thank you, Doctor. Let's get an EEG in his call series. Anticipate me. No, he's not dead. He's still breathing. His heart's still beating. I think he's got a chance. Not much, but a chance. It all depends on how long his brain's been deprived of oxygen. Three months. That's all I had with him. Three months. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. Now, don't do that now. I told you. He's not dead yet. 
Look, honey, you want me to phone somebody? Pete, maybe? Loopy? No. Is there any place I can... a church? Sure, there's a chapel right over the next wing. They call it the meditation room. That's the way they do things these days, but it's really a chapel. Come on, I'll take you there. Come on. Come on, it's all right. Flat as a pancake. just done a skull series on an emergency patient. He's got a flat EEG and he's not responding. I'm sending him to intensive care. No, it's minor bruises. The basic problem seems to be brain damage. Now, there's a chance. There's a faint chance he could be a donor for Marco. What's he doing? Same. What about the skull series? It's negative. You plan on going tonight or tomorrow morning? With the transplant? Boy, the grapevine in this place is frightening. I don't know when we'll go. If we'll go. Mr. Marco. Mm, thank you. <laughs> Some supper. Custard, gelatin, and uh, something. <laughs> something I've never seen before. I hope I never see again. <sighs> Steve, when I get out of here, first thing we're going to do, as soon as I'm able, of course, Go to Marcel's for dinner, huh? You, me, the kids, everyone. I've already planned my meal. It's your dad. Hey. What's the matter? Nothing. Now, look, son. I am going to get out of here. Now, you can uh, be sorry for me, sure. But don't you mourn for me yet. Okay? Now, come on, let me see you smile. You keep talking, I won't be able to feed you. Oh, sorry. Hey, what are you doing? Well, you ought to be grateful. It looks terrible. And you see, he's not only a doctor, he's a gourmet. What is it now, Doctor? More tests? No, we uh, just want to keep you hungry for a while. You've got a donor? We have a possible donor. Blood grouping's compatible. They're uh, tissue typing right now. If it's compatible and if permission is granted. Ah, uh, get a knife and cut it out. Surgeon's answer for everything. You'd operate on chicken pox if we'd let you. Yeah, probably do him some good, too. You want me for something? Mm-hmm, yeah. Lab pushed the go button on Rodriguez. The tissue's compatible. Any change in the EEG? None. Did you get an AVO2 measurement? Marginal. So? So? Doctor, if you would, I'd appreciate it if you'd talk to Ben Gold for me. We're not exactly the best of friends. Well, that's better than perfect strangers. Where is he? Home. Ted, I've uh, got a date. 
But I need that permission. But we've got theater tickets. And I can't waste one minute more after that don't is pronounced dead than I have to. Peggy, you'll kill me. Well, blame it on your mother. She was the one who wanted you to become a doctor in the first place, wasn't she? What did I do now? Nothing. In that case, you can come in. Come on. I've been keeping up. I can't concentrate, though. It's Rodriguez. I looked in on him a little while ago. His EEG is still flat. Yeah, I know. Telephone. Well, there's still time. You don't think so, huh? Have some french fries? No, thanks. Doctor. You have some anyway. Yeah. You think I should quit on him? Well, I've given up on a lot of patients, Doctor. You have to at a certain point. It's hard as hell for me to give up on Rodriguez. I've known him since he was a kid. I've saved his life three times. Well, does that sound like I'm bragging? No, it sounds like you've been doing a job very well. well. That's the truth. That is the truth. He's a loser. He is a hard luck guy. For the first time, he had some kid disease. I can't even remember what it was anymore. When he was 16, he got cut up pretty bad. For a while there, I thought he was dead. And there were complications after his thyroidectomy. Oh, here. I got a glass somewhere if you'd like to have a little of this ball of milk. No, no thanks. He always paid his bills, though. <laughs> he always paid his bills, which is a lot more than I can say for some of my patients. And he invited me to his wedding. Have you met his wife? No. He's one of my patients, too. Rodriguez. I worked too hard to keep him alive, to get him this far. I worked too damn hard. I'm not about to lose him now. Doctor, if you do lose him, there's a patient in the renal unit. He needs a transplant. Very soon. Oh, boy. Been about five or six weeks taking it easy at home. After that, no complications. You start leading a pretty normal life. <sighs> About getting reservations at Marcel's, huh, Steve? Say, like, about uh, two months from next Saturday. Headaches are starting up again. Hey, that's all right. I'm not going to worry about a little pain now. Now that I can see daylight. How soon before you take him down? Just as soon as the donor's pronounced dead. I don't want to seem uh, morbid, Doctor, but. Uh, do you have any idea how long that'll be? His physician's here now. I don't know why I keep looking at that. I guess I keep wishing the numbers would change. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's his wife. I know, but... Well, let her in! Yes, doctor. I'm sorry, nurse. I'm sorry. Amor, 
que no está lo dentro. Te quiero. Te quiero tanto. I wanted to see him for the last time. What do you mean, last time? When they gave me this paper to sign, I knew it was over. Give me that. Get out of the way, fella. If you were paid overtime, you'd be the richest living American. As a matter of fact... What kind of a place are you running here? Why have all the miserable, crummy wine? Miss, you better get out of here. My language is going to get pretty rough. You go on home, sir. You can type it up in the morning. Are you sure that... Yes, quite sure. Good night. Good night. Now, before I get this place closed with a padlock put on the door, Sit I'm going to down! I could out yell you back in medical school, and I still can. I hope I won't have to. Now, what happened? Okay. I've got a patient here, Frank Rodriguez. He's still alive. Not exactly kicking, but still alive. You got those lunatics in surgery. They want to cut him open right away for a kidney transplant. In a pig's eye, they will. Yes, doctor. Uh, I'm glad I caught you. Uh, have Dr. Stewart come up here right away, and you take off. I suspect your account may be slightly colored, Ben. Let's hear the other side, shall we? Mrs. Rodriguez? Yes? Uh, I'm Steve Markle. The son of the man who's... Oh. Yes. Well, I wanted to... Uh, well, first, I, I wanted to tell you how sorry I am about Mr. Rodriguez. I'm really sorry. Thank you. A and how grateful we are, my father and I. Uh, how grateful we are to you. It's, it's kind of hard to put into words. I, I just hope you know how we feel. If there's anything at all we can do... The... the paper... What? The paper. The... the permission. I haven't signed it. And she won't sign it until I pronounce her husband dead. No one in this institute had any intention of proceeding until you had, Doctor. I think that should go without saying, Dave. Then who told her Rodriguez was dead? No one. I suppose when I asked the nurse to get the consent form signed, she assumed but that that's quite an assumption, isn't it? No, not really. After all, the patient has no response to the environment. No reflexes, no muscle tone, no spontaneous respiration, a flat EEG. Don't patronize me, fella. Furthermore, Dave, we uh, measured the oxygen consumption of the brain. It was marginal. Now it's dropped off. There's only one rule that says when Rodriguez is dead, that's when his attending physician, me, Ben Gold, when I say so, and I say he's still alive. Ben, will you try to be civil? This is a matter of some importance. If we can't discuss it calmly and intelligently. He almost died on me once before Rodriguez did. I pulled him out of it. Is that why you won't let go now? Is that bad? Is that so wrong? No, it's commendable. I know how you feel, Doctor. I feel the same way about Markle. I don't want him to die. I don't want his 18-year-old son to be the sole support of three younger kids who already lost their mother. But if he dies because I can't get him a new kidney in time, I'll just have to face it. I guess I went off half cocked. What else is new? Nurse, I'm Dr. Gold. How is Mr. Marco? <laughs> He's stable, doctor. Thank you. There's a phrase that's interesting. Was murdered. Hollinger was murdered. No, all we need to know is who Hollinger was and who killed him. Perhaps we can share a pool. Share a pool? It's called bluffing with one. Marco? That's right. right. You wanted a surgical team? No, no, no. I was just, uh, just another doctor. Oh, well. You're thinking what I'm thinking? And you're a fair game. What do you think my chances are? Well, that's hard to say. Oh, no. No, 
not for me, it isn't. Everything's going to work out great. I've got faith. Well, not because I'm a very religious man. It's just, uh, I guess I'm an optimist. You know, when you're a widower with four kids, you got to be. Did you meet my oldest son? No. Oh, well, he stepped out for a few minutes. He's at the age where he's uh, supposed to hate his father and everything he stands for. But you know something about Steve? He, he doesn't even have a Che Guevara poster on his wall. Well, maybe that'll come later. <laughs> yeah. You know something, Doctor? You look gloomier than my son. Just, just thoughtful, Mr. Marco. I don't think she should talk anymore, not because you're boring me, but because you have to get your rest now. You leaving? Yeah. You're not going to examine me or anything? No, I just came by to meet you, wish you good luck. Oh. Well, that was very uh, kind of you, Doctor. Uh, doctor who? Gold. Well, it's been a great pleasure meeting you, Dr. Gold. See you around. Sure. See you around. The rest are picked up from Scuttlebutt. How can a doctor be so, so... So ethical, Steve. Doctor's first responsibility is to his own patient, and he's been... An orderly to 506, please. An orderly to 506. Oh, hi. I had some time to kill. I thought I'd... You're Dr. Gold? Steve, right? You're gonna let them Dr. operate, Dr. aren't you? Dr. please. Dr. Aren't you? You don't understand, Steve. You see, I have you're a You're killing patient. my father. Yes, Do you know I, that? You're but, killing my but, father. But, but, you're Steve. killing him. You're killing him. Nurse? That's my son out there. What's wrong? It's all right, Mr. Morrow. It's OK. Everything's OK. Steve's fine. Everything's under control. <sighs> Nothing, huh? No, Doctor. Sorry about that scene in the hall. Oh, well, I'm sorry about the one in Craig's office. I'm going to give him a little longer. Maybe too late for Mr. Markle. But it's too early for Mr. Rodriguez.
Dr. Stewart, please. Dr. Stewart, then Gold. Okay. Doctor, CEG, I think I'm getting some activity. Amazing the way it happened. I was all set to pull the plug. And yes, I was just given a briefing downstairs by two wide-eyed nurses and three gaping interns. How's he doing? Improving steadily, Dave. I still don't believe it myself. I, uh, I'm sorry I had to drag you away from that dinner, but... Uh... If you hadn't, Paul, I think I'd be looking for a new chief of medicine. Oh, hello, Doctor. We were wondering when you'd get here. Mr. Marco. Doctor, you were... You didn't bring the orderlies with you. And where's the cart? You, you can't wheel me to surgery without a cart. There isn't going to be an operation tonight, Mr. Marco. Oh, no. Steve, it's gonna be all right. Be fine, I, I promise you. Uh, uh, doctor, this... This headache is just terrific. You suppose you could give me a shot or something? Right away, sir. The way things are going now, I wouldn't be surprised if he got up and started jogging right around the block. I doubt if you could. You're exhausted. Why don't you take a break? Well, I'd, um... Go ahead. I'll hold the fort. Okay. Dr. Gold? I might as well. It's gonna be a long night. He's in fibrillation. Ventricular tachycardia. Crash card. Lidocaine, 50 milligram bolus. Get out of the way. Back. Give me two fifty. Two fifty. Give me four hundred. Four hundred. Sinus rhythm, but the blood pressure's down. Get an isopril drip started. Right away. Well, I, I wanted to tell you that. I, I mean, I, I heard about your husband, the miracle. <laughs> I guess everybody in the hospital's heard about it by now. Dr. Wright, please. Uh, I can't Wright. be a hypocrite. I just can't. Steve. That's your name, Steve? Yeah. Mrs. Rodriguez. Most of me wishes it never happened. That your husband was dead. That he'll still die. But another part... <laughs> I guess that's the part my father's responsible for. Well, I hope it comes out all right. I really hope he makes it. His cardiac output is low. He's not responding to the drip. You mean his heart's failing, but why? He was in an automobile accident, right? Yeah? Third collision? Mm -hmm. What's that? In a serious accident, the first collision is the vehicle against another object. The second collision is the impact of the passenger's body against the interior of the vehicle. There's also a third collision, when the victim's internal organs impact on the rigid inner surfaces of the body itself. 
like uh, the heart hitting the sternum, which could account for severe heart damage, uh, left ventricular failure. Paul, your bypass pump? Unless we give us Art some help, we've lost him. Will you speak to his wife? Bypass. All right, going on now. We're going on a full bypass. Okay. Are we up to formal? I think it's during the table, Paul. You're looking good here, too. All right, let's start cooling him down. Let's take him oh. down to 30. OK, down to 30. Bypass bump. Fifty-six minutes. All right, let's come off the bypass. We're off. Arterial pressure is 90 over 70. Venus is 21, and we're about uh, 300 cc's to the table. How does it look at your end of the table, Paul? Looks great so far. I only wish my watch ran that smooth. I gotta hand it to you, Doctor. You uh, made a small contribution yourself. Oh, yeah, sure. I gave up. Two times I gave up. Gentlemen, I've heard enough arguments for the day. And after what happened tonight, I scarcely think another one is warranted. What's your prognosis, Dave? He's got a fighting chance. Of course, if he does recover, it'll be weeks before we'll know if there's any brain or organic damage. But he's still alive. We'll let Paul's bypass pump support his circulation for a while. Give his heart a chance to recover. Hi. Where have you been? Thought you were coming up with us. Oh, I was with a patient. Mr. Markle? Mm hmm I'm sorry about him. I'm happy about Rodriguez. Well... Gentlemen, I have a big day tomorrow. Thanks for the coffee, Dave. I'll see you in class, kid. Good night, gentlemen. Goodbye, doctor. What about Markle? Well, we're trying every major hospital again for a donor. Meanwhile, he's alive. You know, I've been thinking about having a family doctor. You mean a, quote, specialist in family medicine, unquote? What he means is a Ben Gold, whatever you call him.